in order that through his death, I can now come to God and have fellowship restored back with God. What are other verses that help me to understand this verse? Um, I put Psalms 119, 176, 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2, 25, Isaiah 55, 7, 1 Peter 3, 18, Romans 3, 10 to 19. What are some things this verse teaches me about God? Um, God loves us sinners and wants to have fellowship with us through his son. What sins do this verse reprove? Self-righteousness, unbelief, idolatry, and I put all sin. What are some things this verse teaches me about myself and my daily life? That God wants to keep fellowship with me, but I must keep short accounts with him and repent from my sin daily in order to keep that fellowship. Good. What are other lessons from this verse? God, who is holy and righteous, cannot restore until something is done about uh, my sin. Okay. And then I would like, um, Mrs. Coleman has been very busy lately. Uh, doing. You've been very busy lately doing different things. But by next week, I want you to be studied up and, yes, yep, and ready for the verse journal. All right, we're going to do some singing. All right, let's do some singing. 493 to open our evening service in song. 493, I'll live for him who died for me. How happy then my life shall be. Let's go ahead and stand. We can live for him properly sitting now, can we? 493. My life, my love, I give to thee. Now Lamb of God who died for My life to thee, my Savior and my God. I live for him who died for me. How happy then my life shall be. I live for him who died for me, my Savior and my God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, may this not just be a church thing, but may this beginning of the week be a week of living for the one who died for us. I pray that that be our theme every waking morning. Get a hold of your word, spend time in prayer, and walk out the door ready to live for you. Equip us, Lord. Strengthen us. Provide for us. And I pray that by our love, we would serve you in a greater fashion. And we pray for your help and your blessing and your power, your hand to be on us. Pray that you bless our church, our efforts, bless them indeed. Oh Lord, would you help us? Keep us away from the wicked one. I pray that we would want to be close to you, right with you, be strong in the Lord and the power of your might. Bless this service, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated.
501, step by step, will be our next song this evening, 501, step by step. forward at this time.
was good to have a wonderful morning service today. The Lord gave us a good service, gave us visitors, and just to see that people were uh, worked with during the afternoon and discipled, that was a blessing. Um, as far as announcements, I would just give a big prayer request, and that prayer request would be for the church. And I'm going to ask Julian, when he uh, prays for the offering, to pray for the church to have special wisdom and strength from God in our evangelism, our soul winning efforts as the weather has begun to break, uh, we really want to go after lost souls. And we're asking not just for our efforts, but for God's power and leading and wisdom on how to do it. Um, and so make that a big matter of prayer as you're praying throughout the week uh, that the Lord would help us as was played to get the gospel not only around the corner, but around the world. Keep up with the missionaries, keep up with the letters as they're posted on what the Lord is doing on those fields because we are a part of their ministry. Um, and so let's be praying for our missionaries, but let's be a missionary. As the weather warms out, make sure you're out doing something for the Lord, but we need his power, we need his wisdom on how to organize it, have a plan, and then to go. Ushers, if you will come, if you have a cell phone, please power it off men's meeting right after this service is over, then a vacation Bible school meeting for those who are interested in serving the Lord this year in vacation Bible school. Julian, if you would come, ask the Lord to lead us as we seek to win the loss. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, Lord, we again, Lord, just thank you for bringing us here this evening. Lord, thank you, Lord, for uh, just providing a, a church, Lord, that uh, is willing to stand the test of times, Lord, and, and to teach and preach your word. Lord, the evening service, Lord, where there's different topics, Lord, in your book that we were able to learn. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you have your hands on the tithes and offering. Lord, I know, Lord, that everyone in this auditorium, Lord, is a product of the, miss of the mission, uh, missionary or even the ministry of this church. Lord, we all was here because there was at least a, a track put on our door. I was here and my family was transformed because someone uh, was willing to go, Lord, to put that flyer on my door. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we want to continue to give. Lord, as the weather break, Lord, we know that people are searching and seeking, Lord, but there's nothing but wickedness out there and they're going to find it. But Lord, I pray, Lord, that we go into your, with your power, Lord, to, to be able to reach those who are lost. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we don't um, have the form of godliness but, but lack the power thereof. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we have the power of you, Lord, to be able to reach those who are lost, Lord, and not our own power, not uh, doing things for the accolades of men, Lord, but to truly do it because we love you, Lord, and we know what you can do. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, that we have a spirit of just going and allowing you to do the saving. Lord, I pray, Lord, that each one of us here, Lord, uh, just want to continue to be obedient to your word. So, Lord, I ask you to have your hands on the tithe and offering. Continue to bless it, Lord. We know what you can do. We've seen what you did in this building, with this building. But, Lord, I pray, Lord, that it motivate us, Lord, to get out this building, yes. to reach those outside, Lord. Amen. So, Lord, we love you, we honor you. And all these things I pray in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's continue singing tonight. I'd like to you stand for our last one. Hymn 434. He keeps me singing. 434. 
He keeps me singing. Hopefully, he's keeping you singing tonight. Amen. Oh, but as we start referring the page, before we get to 434, there's a birthday for a young lady that we got to sing about. There's no other individual in Cornerstone like this one. So we got to make sure we sing out because Friday was Monique's birthday. So let's go ahead and sing happy birthday to Monique, the one and only. All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Amen. God bless you. There's no other Monique in Cornerstone like this Monique. Amen. 434, he keeps me singing. reason you're smiling. I want you to sing up tonight. And if you're frowning, think about Jesus and then smile and then sing the song out. So let's go on verse number five. Here we go.
cordless. Let's ask God's blessing before we begin tonight. Our Heavenly Father, I do pray that you would bless this time together. I pray that you would please clear my thoughts, help me to depend upon the Holy Spirit to do the good work in our church that I believe you want to do and that I know you can do. I just pray that you would allow our core membership to be strengthened in these things and solidified and Lord, to really grow and, and prosper as they understand the Bible more in regards to music and worldliness and apostasy. So help this time together to be fruitful. And I pray that Jesus Christ would be lifted up. In his name we pray, amen. I really struggled with how to end this series. And in reality, in my mind and on paper, I started and stopped a few times really seeking God's leading on how to bring this series to a landing. It is something that I think we've needed for a long time, and I also think it's something <clears throat> that we'll be able to build upon, meaning the principles you've learned through these sessions will be independently built upon in the years to come. But suffice it to say that we've taken a strong position in regards to music in our church, in our public worship, <clears throat> and we've encouraged you to take a strong stand in your music at home. This is slide 268. I would ask if you haven't heard the whole series to not judge one aspect um, when you haven't heard the whole thing. You can go back and get the whole thing. We will make that actually a, a available to you so that if you want to continue this study on your own, you can. But the position is clear and we make no apology for it that we teach against and we preach against and we don't utilize in any way, shape or form, traditional black gospel music. And for I don't know how many sessions, we have taken biblical principles to show why it's not good for you, why it's not good for your family, why it's not good for your marriage, why it's not good for your mind, why it's not good for your church, and why we won't have it here. And so music again nothing turn it on okay let's try that there we go music is a language what does that mean music is a language Justine it what it speaks. Music is a language. It's a language. It's not neutral. It's a language. What does that mean? Jamari? Okay. Music is a language. It's not neutral. What does that mean? Music is a language. Kalita? Okay, according to our course, we've taught that music is a language. It is not neutral. Music is not neutral. We're going to stop right here and stay here all night if we have to, all our time if we have to, till somebody can get it. Music is a language. Music is not neutral. Now, much of Christianity says music is neutral, which means music is neutral. But in reality, music is a language, okay? 
Julian. It's saying something. It will lead you somewhere. We have a language. And the words in our language are put together to form sentences that are not neutral. They're not neutral. I can say a sentence with words, and that sentence is either morally good or morally evil. We put words together and we produce concepts that are good or bad. Music is not neutral. Music is either good or it is bad. Okay, now don't miss that because that's really foundational to this whole study. It's either good or bad, but it's not neutral. If we take the position that music is neutral, then we can listen to a lot of things and it's okay. But if we treat it like a language, words can be put together to produce something either good or bad, then we're on track if we remember that music is a language. It's saying something. And what it says when it's in the form of black contemporary music, what it says is worldliness. It speaks worldliness. Okay? It gets as close as it can to the party music, to the worldly dance music. So it is speaking, and it is speaking something worldly. Black gospel music, the way it sounds. We pulled up for church today. And somebody was driving through the alley in a pickup truck blasting uh, gospel music. And I thought about the beat, I thought about the sound, the instruments, and I could have easily seen someone just up doing an immoral dance to that music, to that beat. It's worldly. And people come to our church and they say, I haven't heard music like that in church. Why is it so different? Why is it so different? Because we aren't using music that appeals to the world. We don't want to use worldly music in our church because God hates worldliness and he can't bless it. Black gospel music is worldly. The musicians are not separated. They're not separated from the world in dress, in association, in their own music. They're not separated. Now what does that mean? I just said the obvious, but I just want to know somebody's listening. The black gospel musicians don't believe the Bible when it teaches we ought to separate from the world. Now put that into your own words. Sean? And so if the musicians are not separating from the world, do you think they can influence you? You think they can influence your kids? You think they can influence your church if they're not willing to separate? Black gospel music is ecumenical. Ecumenical, what does that mean? It is ecumenical. Justine? Okay, Avery? Okay, it is a type of music that is used in this one world church movement that we see emerging right in front of us. They both were right there as far as uh, their explanation. And so <laughs> there is a type and a style of music, not just one style, but this is a style that is used by lots of different religions and groups with false doctrine. And so it's not just personal separation, it's doctrinal separation. It's ecclesiastical separation. Ecclesia is the Greek word for church, ecclesia, ecclesiastical separation. The best way to, and the easiest way to think of it is church separation, not just personal separation. Per personal separation says, I shouldn't go to the bar and hang out with the guys there. That's what personal separation says. Ecclesiastical separation says I shouldn't yoke up with a Catholic who prays to Mary and cooperate with them in ministry. You've got to understand these concepts. Okay? So what is 
ecclesiastical separation. Somebody tell me. Because I'm not going to waste my time if we're saying these things over and over again and nobody's getting it. What is ecclesiastical separation? Monique. Yeah. And so there's nothing wrong with fellowshipping with a sister church if they hold to right doctrine. But if they don't hold to right doctrine, we separate. We separate. The black gospel music is also charismatic. What does that mean? It's charismatic. Jamari. All for show. No real power behind it. The charismatic movement is what? We spent a whole week last week on that. Steve. Yeah. What is the charismatic movement? Okay, but what is that doctrine? Yes, Jericho. Both 1 Corinthians and Romans give a list of the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Okay? Those gifts were given to the local church. Some of them are permanent gifts, meaning we still have them today. Some of them were temporary gifts given until this would be completed. Well, this was completed... And about 100 years ago, a group of people got together and said, even though this has been completed, we still want to operate in those temporary gifts, like tongues, which they never got it right, never got tongues right, and other things. Okay, the charismatic movement, the black gospel music is the music of that charismatic movement. These are very important reasons to stay away from it. And so... It's important that we not let our church become influenced by fleshly and worldly sounding music. That we guard the church from fleshly and worldly sounding music. What would happen if we invited Kirk Franklin to come and to perform on our platform? Okay, so we're asking ourselves, what would happen to the very character of our church. We learned this morning that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. If we let Kirk Franklin sing in our church, we would eventually lower our dress standards. We certainly had lowered our music standards right there by inviting him, right? But it would also lead to us lowering our dress standards and our moral standards. What we're saying is that the music is connected to other things. How we dress and how we live. And if you listen to that type of music in your car, or if you listen to that type of music at home or on the bus with your headphones, it will affect your standards of dress and morality. And dress matters to God. Modesty matters to God. And as the weather warms up, you're going to hear me hitting on modesty, good and hard. You say, why? Because it's in the Bible. But this music tears it down. Fundamentally, it tears it down. It attacks standards of dress and morality. And so we're looking at now the, the last thing that I want to give you. And that is at the top of this slide. Black gospel music weakens the fundamentalist stance of the church. 
in regards to many things. I've already said dress, morality. If we had Kirk Franklin here and that type of music employed in our church that people ask for when they come here, it would weaken the fundamental stand of Cornerstone Baptist Church. It would not be what God intended for it to be. It'd be like those churches, and you can fill in the blank because you've been to some of them. Wouldn't be the same place. And so men who know music more than you and I do have observed this fact. You may not know the names, but I want you to listen to what they have to say and see if it's true. Okay, Gordon Sears had a music ministry for many years with Rudy Atwood. He was saddened before his death by the dramatic change in the music in fundamental Baptist churches. And he said this, when the standards of music is lowered, then the standards of dress is also lowered. When the standards of dress is lowered, then the standard of conduct is lowered. When the standard of conduct is lowered, then in the sense of value, God's truth is lowered. Music is connected to how we live, how we dress, how we act. It is a thing that is taking us in a direction. Now, if you want to go in that direction, you go, but you're not taking this church with you. Frank Garlock. This is the man who started Majesty Music many years ago. His daughter Shelly married Ron Hamilton, the recently late Ron Hamilton, and Ron Hamilton eventually took over Majesty Music. Frank Garlock, the founder of Majesty Music, said, if a church starts using CCM, it will eventually lose all other standards. Now, what's CCM? Somebody raise their hand if they know. Okay. Okay, contemporary Christian music, contemporary Christian music, and I do think that majesty music uh, needs to be aware and alarmed and on guard by their own warnings from years ago. That's another lesson. The late fundamentalist leader, Ernest Pickering, gave a similar warning. I was required to read this book in Bible college, and here's a quote from it. He said, perhaps nothing precipitates a slide toward new evangelicalism, that's right doctrine with no separation. Nothing precipitates a slide toward new evangelicalism more than the introduction of CCM. Stop there, what does CCM stand for? Mike, what does it stand for? Contemporary Christian music. This inevitably leads toward a gradual slide in other areas as well until the entire church is infiltrated by ideas and programs alien to the original position of the church. That's Ernest Pickering, The Tragedy of Compromise, The Origin and Impact of New Evangelicalism. Now, you may not know these people that I'm quoting, but I just wanted you to know that I am acknowledging what other strong fundamentalists have said about music for years. Not pulling this out of the hat. Your music is related to what you believe, how you live, how you dress, what your marriage is like, what your children are like, what your church is like. Music matters. Big time. Big time. You get weak in your music, you're going to get weak in your life. You get sloppy in your music, you're going to get sloppy in your life. Keep your music strong, sacred, not resembling this wicked world. You got that? If the music goes, the dress standards go. On the left is a bathing suit from 1881. When there was modesty, what do they look like today? If the music goes, the standard of dress goes. If the music goes, then we can drink booze. 
Because in those churches who have let their music go, they are slowly but surely saying, hey, that stuff we used to preach about booze, it's okay now. Let's sit down and have a beer. If the music goes, we can drink. If the music goes, our young men can get twisties and wear necklaces. It's in the music. The music. Black gospel weakens the fundamentalist stance of a church. We're going to know what our kids believe about when they turn 17, 18. We're going to know if this is in their heart, staying away from the world. But I'll tell you what, as long as I'm here, God giving me strength, we're not going to let the music played with these instruments or any other instruments weaken the strong fundamentalist stance of Cornerstone Baptist Church. It's that important. If the music goes, the doctrine goes. We see this happening on every hand today. Music is a battleground. And I do get a little worried when I don't get amens and people nodding their heads. I get worried about what you're listening to during the week. You know, you could go to a church that gives you the music you want. Why are you coming here? Okay, why, why play the game when you can go and get fed by that music you say, I come here because I believe it's the truth. Then live the truth. Amen. Amen. And so tonight, we're going to shift directions to deal primarily with how dropping the music standards has historically hurt other independent fundamental Baptist churches like ours. Okay, we're going to name some names on purpose. Now, these churches, their downfall was not black gospel music. It was more CCM, Christian rock. Why? Because they're predominantly white churches. But what I want to say is, if Christian rock can turn those churches wrong, then the black version of Christian rock will turn us wrong. If it can happen to them can happen to us. I had to search for over an hour to find a picture of this church. This is the example of Landmark Baptist Church in Cincinnati, Ohio. Total shame what has happened to this church. It used to be an old-fashioned, fundamental, Bible-believing Baptist churches with church with standards, old-fashioned standards of music old-fashioned standards of dress, and a commitment to the King James Bible. That's what that church used to be. And it was full. People wanted it, man. They wanted to sing the old hymns. They wanted somebody to stand up and, and, and preach behind the pulpit with the King James Bible. Where is this church today? It's still there. In the 1990s, they took a change of direction and at the heart of that change was music. The instrument that this man used to change the church was music. He changed the music and then everything else just followed right behind it. This is Matt Holman. He became the pastor in 2001. He said, we need a live band in the church. High energy, Christian rock and roll. Now, in Acts 17, when Paul preached on Mars Hill, and he preached against their, their idolatry, and he preached repentance, and he preached, come to Jesus, he boldly rebuked them. Somehow that doesn't jive with this pastor's quote that church should be fun and on the edge. Fun and on the edge. The church is not Landmark Baptist Church anymore, by the way. It is simply Landmark Church. And that's a pattern you're going to see over and over again. Then let's consider the example of Bethlehem Baptist Church in Fairfax, Virginia. When I was in Bible college, I remember hearing about this church. They were listed in the sword of the Lord. They took a fundamental stand. But this church illustrates the changes that contemporary Christian music can make. At one time, Bethlehem Baptist Church 
was an old-fashioned Baptist church committed to separation, preaching out of the King James Bible. That's who they were, Bethlehem Baptist Church. But they decided to move toward the what? Let's move toward the contemporary. And they did that. And by 2002, the worship team was led by four women on the platform. Today, the church has very loose standards. I'm going to show you a picture of the church today. This is Bethlehem Baptist Church. Now, if you want a rock concert, go to a rock concert. That's what I'm trying to say. Somebody's out there probably saying, "Eh, what's the problem? Church is church. A rock concert is a rock concert. If you're dumb enough to want to go to a rock concert and have your heart defiled, then do that. But don't call it church. The pastor said this. This is the guy that took it over and turned it. He said, we enforce no rule on our folks. Apparel issues are really of no concern to us. David Stokes. Now, now I want you to think now. This is time to turn on the thinking caps. If he really means that, then that means he would allow a Sunday school teacher to come on Sunday with a bikini. Right? If he's consistent with what he's saying, he would allow that. Why? He said apparel issues are really of no concern to us. Now, of course, that pastor is weak and as sorry and as compromising as he is, would not allow a Sunday school teacher to come on Sunday morning in a bikini, which means that he has really just rejected the old-fashioned standards and has replaced them with new, loose, worldly standards. But they like to say, we we don't have anything about apparel. Everybody has a standard. His are just really low. And we want to keep ours really high. Why? Because we want to honor the Lord Jesus Christ, not only in our spirit and our soul, but also in our body, which is the Lord's. Stokes has also led the church to drop its King James only clause from the church bylaws. Now you understand that I, according to the covenant we have made as a church, Even as the pastor, I, as a pastor of this church, don't have the right to stand in this pulpit on a Sunday morning and preach out of any other version of the Bible than the authorized King James Version of the Bible. Why? Our church covenant, our church constitution, our bylaws forbid it. And so what he did as pastor is he just changed the bylaws. Their church said the same thing as ours. And he started preaching from the New American Standard Version, the New Living Translation. Terrible translations. They also decided to change the name of the church from Bethlehem Baptist Church to Fair Oaks Church. What did they drop? They always do. Always do. But that wasn't emergent enough for them, so a few years later, they changed it again. This is what they are now, expectation church. So we see that Bethlehem Baptist Church is picking up my voice. Hello, hello, hello. Look at that. We see that Bethlehem Baptist Church has gone a long way in changing from what they started as And music has been at the heart of that change. Where does it start, church? Typically, where does it start? Music. Music. Okay? Don't get in this pulpit, don't get in this platform singing the worldly stuff. Because I'll stop you mid-song and tell you to sit down. So we see that This church had a conservative root, and it changed, and the heart of that change was music. Portia was born in Detroit, where this church used to be. This is an example of Temple Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan. 
This church was led by J. Frank Norris from 1935 to 1950, strong fundamentalists. I mean strong. By the way, he pastored the two ch largest churches in the world at the same time. This church in Detroit and another one, I believe, in Texas at the same time. And at the church in Texas, because he was preaching strong and taking strong stands, a man walked into his office uh, to do him harm. And that pastor pulled a gun out of his desk and shot the man dead. That's a fundamentalist. The church was pastored from 1950 to 1975 by G.B. Vick. G.B. Vick. They used only the King James Bible. That pastor at the bottom said this three years before I was born. Okay, he said this. They only use the King James. He said, it has become fashionable to use many different versions of the Bible today. Listen, this King James Version, our English Bible, the Bible of our fathers and mothers, is the one that has come floating down to us upon the blood of Christian martyrs, our forefathers. It has been, I say, the one text of the Baptist Bible College, and it will be as long as I have anything to do with this school. Let's stick to the old book. But that same church changed. In 1990, the church got a new young pastor named Brad Powell. And he began to lead the church in a contemporary direction. And this is how the church now describes their music. The praise bands provide music for all services. The praise band consists of the piano, synthesizer, acoustic and electric guitar, bass guitar, and drums. In February of 2000, Temple Baptist Church changed its name to Northridge Church of Plymouth, Michigan. And this is how they did it. They took a survey in their community and found that most people did not like the name Baptist. So they dropped it. Could you imagine John the Baptist dropping that name? I want to play just a portion of one of their church services. This was a fundamental independent Baptist King James only church. That was a church just like ours at one time. Now don't twist your face up if you're listening to black gospel and you're caught. Can you go further to the sermon, the guy in the pink shirt? gave it to us. There he is. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At Damn dawn, before, he appeared again in the temple courts where Jesus, all the people gathered the around him and he sat down in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone oh, such a woman. There we go. Now, what would you say? And I love how the text says they were using the question as a trap.
Last, I want you to consider the example of Southside Baptist Church in Greenville, South Carolina. This church was started in 1946, and from 1965 to 1996, it was pastored by Walt Hanford. Walt Hanford. His wife, Elizabeth, was one of the daughters of John R. Rice. It was an old-fashioned, fundamental Baptist church until the 1990s. It's a church like ours. Till the 1990s. 1993 started with a CCM concert. That's how it started. And then that same year, that very same year, they gave up the King James Version <clears throat> in favor of the NIV. One of the translators on the NIV, by the way, was a lesbian named Virginia Mollencott, who took out everywhere where it said sodomite in that Bible so it wouldn't make her look bad. You should know that before you use one of those perversions. The church then changed its name to Greenville Fellowship. You see what they always do? They take Baptists out of there, quick as they can. Okay, and that's what it's called today. Now, I say in one sense, it's good that these churches are changing their names because they're certainly changing their beliefs. And if they don't believe Baptists, they shouldn't be called Baptists. But their doctrine of new doctrine to mix with the old doctrine it's not compatible so they have to change the whole church everything has to change and where do they start with the music and what they're quick to say is we're not changing doctrine we're just changing style just changing style modesty is a doctrinal issue okay alcohol is a doctrinal issue issue. Taking words out of the Bible is a doctrinal issue. Yoking up with Catholics, Lutherans, Presbyterians is a doctrinal issue. And so, music that the world uses for sexual escapades and to incorporate that sound into the church is a doctrinal issue. To yoke up with the Pentecostals and the, the other Charismatics via our music is a doctrinal issue. The outline has been simple. We've given you these lessons for weeks. We've paused and come back, paused and come back. But we've given you these things. Music is a language. I'm talking about the sound. I'm not even talking about the words right now. Please understand, if you weren't here, point number one is not talking about the words, the sound of the music is a language. The way it sounds is taking you somewhere in your family, in your marriage, in your church, with your children. The sound of the music is speaking something good or bad. The worldliness is seen in that the musicians admit to listening to everything, including wicked and fornicating R&B. The musicians are not separated from the world in the way that they live. That should matter to you. Black gospel music is a huge part of the ecumenical movement. Black gospel music is charismatic. And black gospel music, if we were to use it starting next Sunday, would be the leaven that would weaken the fundamentalist stance of the church. And so if anybody wants to know why we don't use it, I've got plenty of material. I'll just send it to them. Don't ask me to re-preach it for a little while, but I'll send them all 311 slides and they can begin to understand why we don't use that music and why you shouldn't either. Amen? Amen. Make some strong decisions for your family, for yourself. I'll be sending out a list of resources. I'll be sending that out tonight. A, a list of resources, a long list of places where you can get good, godly, sacred music. I'll send you out resources, but then it's you doing the work and getting rid of the raunchy, getting rid of the compromising, and starting to employ that which will clean your heart and your mind, edify you, and build you up. Music is a big deal. It's taking you somewhere. Where are you going? Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll take these principles, 
drive them even home during this invitation. Lord, if someone would come down and make a good decision about music today, a good, strong, separated decision about music, God, I know how you can use that in their life if they do it with the right heart, for the right reason, not to conform, not to fit in, but to honor you. I pray that you'll bless this invitation and that many good decisions would be made in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand to your feet with your heads bowed.